Greetings, I am the Penniless Priest, and welcome to my analysis of the Cobalt and Catacombs card set. With all the cards now revealed, I'll be touching on all of them, and giving my predictions for the decks to appear in the meta. First up, the cards. For those unaware, this is the system I use for rating my cards. From A to F, with S reserved for cards that are too powerful and might break the game, looking at you patches, while pluses and minuses are for describing the card's place in Arena. I'll touch upon each card very briefly before moving on to the next one. Let's begin. Clearly a decent card, and not much more. It's like the combos from Old Handlock, except in one card. Be secure, thin your deck. A-OK. -okay. Good card. Terrible top deck. You wait too long and this card is literally worse than Magma Rager. You need a lot of synergy to pull this card off. Being flexible is a valuable thing. This card is that in spades. Death Rattle, keep being mediocre. Clones are a good thing, I'll say. All this card needs is one ounce of synergy. One ounce. Ever wanted three mage hero powers? The adjacent damage effect is best with high health minions, like this one. Kill tempo, gain tempo. Tempo! Decent balance with a touch of randomness. Quite strong and the condition isn't crippling. You're not building a deck around this, and that's required for it. The condition is just too inflexible. Medium power tied to low, low flexibility. Incredible power. Pity she doesn't play nice with Hunter. Power! But limit! But power! But limit! Alternatively, you could just put in the spell you want. The armor can be strong, but is it worth an inflexible one-drop? It's like Arcanologist, but more random and tailored only to one deck. So Elemental Mage gets a discounted Cabalist Tome? Madness. A good secret, through and through. Elemental... Quest Mage? It's basically a Dragonfire Potion if your deck is super slanted. I love it, but don't risk it unless you really want to have fun. High tempo, very low flexibility. Flexibility and negative aggro. You know, card draw. Cute idea. Shame it'll never work. Okay, wow. Yes. Eh, not quite up to snuff. Rewarding control decks with control. Hooray! Surprisingly aggressive card when you look at the transformations. Completely dependent on other cards. I call this one Thin Your Deck. The same as Crystal Lion, except with more aggressiveness. A single casting of Spike Ridge Steed makes this card worth it. Hand buffing done right. You want a selective thought steal? Of course you do. All cases considered, it's alright. Compare and contrast with Cabal Courier. Pass. It won't define a Death Rattle deck, but it'll have a place in one. The anti-tempo a priest deserves. Slow, but potentially quite powerful. Basic control option for the dragon deck. Very strong card for dragon and OTK decks. You get an OTK, and you get an OTK. This card could be terrifying with the right synergies. Anti-aggro and anti-tempo. Anti, anti, anti. Zero mana, draw the next minion your opponent kills. Arcanologist with more aggressive stats. Death Rattle decks only, and not that good in them. Yeah, that's pretty fair. So, Control Death Rattle Rogue is a thing now? It's like Ice Block, but you have to be smart. Is this good enough for Miracle Rogue? Eh. Could cause scary combos if used well. The heart and soul of the new Miracle deck. Ha! <laughs> that's funny. Overload Synergies might save this card someday. Very solid and flexible healing. Sadly, picking a totem isn't worth a whole card. Okay, this scares me. It's like a win more card, except it doesn't help you. Inflexible effect with an inflexible condition. Guy in good six drops? Go fish. Alternatively, you could play actual cards instead of totems. Elementals with battle cries will probably like this. Not as bad as people say, but just too random. A. Next card. Warlocks do seem to like their own minions dying. Not bad, touch risky. Who needs Molten Giants, am I right? The control. It's real! Now I'm just picturing Malganus inside of a gnome. Will this make discard work? No, it won't. We will build a wall, and the Minari will pay for it! This card is good against fatigue decks, and nothing else. The Doom Guards came in one by one, hurrah, hurrah. If opponent is beating you, pretend for a moment that he isn't. Strong minion only lacking in synergies. 
Why does the original art not include all of the spikes and death? Lacks flexibility, except when it doesn't. It's like Gashirage, but less cool. Too slow for tempo, too vanilla for control. It's like two shield slams. Sorta. Good synergy is carrying this card. That's it. That's cool. Doesn't mean it'll work, sadly. Lead the charge. Slowly. You know what? Yeah, I'll take a solid beast one drop. Taunts with that attack is just anti-aggression. Armor boost can be quite useful when tied to a beast. That's some good AoE heals for cheap mana. So Validated Doomsayer didn't work, let's try even smaller. Tech guards are good things. Adorable, but no. Razor Fen Hunter, is that you? I don't even know what kinds of monsters Death Knight Rexar can make now. If you have a lot of minions, buffing their health won't serve you very nicely. Wait a minute. This is just Raid Leader with stealth. You know Draft Earthen Ring Farseer. Cool and mediocre. A perfect common card, basically. I would have been so proud if they just made this reincarnating rager. I can appreciate some nice tech cards. I see what you're doing, Blizzard, but it's not going to work. Ready for action! Ready for action! Ready for- It's like Bone Mare, except easier to defeat in every way. Well-flavored card all around. Just watch my quick take, this card is awful. That's a lot of stats, actually. Santhazar, could you please stop sleeping on the job? Mages will find this thing adorable right before they ping it. Battlecry, summon a copy of this minion for your opponent. Tech cards are almost always a good thing. Interesting, but not powerful. If your opponent is winning, become Super Annoyatron. I am so happy this card exists. If only it weren't terrible when you don't have a weapon in your hand. Say hello to my little friends. The end is coming! Sadly, low flexibility for its conditions. Hey, you guys remember the priest card confusion? Good times. This card both boosts your flexibility while hindering your opponents. As cool as it is, nah. I never thought I'd call a zero mana 4-4 four four perfectly balanced. The poster girl for the phrase, controlled chaos. I appreciate it when control decks get good minions for cheap. Stage one, kill my boss. Stage two, stage three, profit. Not as bad as it could be, but bad. Fun? Yes. Useful? Nah. Gorgonzola cheese and the world's most average card. Hilarious, but it'll never work. That would be cool if you don't draw your other cards first. Honestly, very well balanced. Thankfully, there do not appear to be any cards that are worthy of an S rank for this set. The cards I have rated A include Branching Paths, Catherine Winterwisp, Potion of Heroism, Lanessa Sun Sorrow, Cavern Shiny Finder, and Cobalt Librarian. This set of A rated cards is nice, since they all have either fairly evident weaknesses or they lack synergy with other cards of their class. That's right, I'm talking to you, Katharina. I don't want an alley cat from you. And as a final bonus, here are my bottom and top picks for the cards of this set. For the bottom, Silver Vanguard. I'm not sure how apparent it was in my quick take, but I hate this card. I don't know why it exists. It's just useless. And for the top, The Darkness. This card may not be the best or the highest rated, but its concept is just amazing in my opinion. If I manage to open a copy of this, you can bet I will try finding a way for it to work. Very excited for this, and for the rest of the expansion. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any requests for future videos, such as a question as to one of my card ratings above, let me know in the comments. And until next time, remember, light smiles upon the jest.